Blaine Snipstall, who is a returning generation peasant farmer. He's a community organizer, an artist, and a seed keeper of agro-indigenous ancestry based in Baltimore. He's part of the International Youth Articulation of La Via Campesina and a leader in La Via Campesina North America. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, before I get started, I, I want to explain why, why I brought this uh, small little watermelon. It's an heirloom watermelon with me. Um, it's a uh, historic watermelon because uh, they said that watermelons can't be grown in my part of the country. Um, and, and through agroecology, this is the reason why it's here. This is a gift for Paul. So only, if you want some, you got to ask Paul. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, before I get into it, I, I, I want to tell you a story. Uh, I, I called my mother before I um, was coming up here. I was like, Mom, uh, I'm going to Yale. She's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I never would have thought weeding carrots would get me to Yale. <laughs> You thought it might get you to jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she goes, well, what happens if you don't weed carrots? And I go, we ain't going to have none. Because the weeds will literally swallow the carrots, and there's not going to be any carrots. Um, you know, and I think that's an analogy uh, when we talk about food sovereignty. You know, if we don't do our proper weeding, we're not going to have this. We're not going to have this movement um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, <clears throat> this last June, um, in Jakarta during our sixth international conference, I, I want to share a very powerful um, image. Um, and I must apologize, I am going to talk about the papers, but it's going to be sparse throughout. <laughs> Ms. Moderator and uh, Mr. June, I'm sure you can expect otherwise. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of our conference, we had um, uh, a moment for Elizabeth Mpofu to, to take the reins as the general coordinator of the movement, <coughs> entirely unrehearsed. When she <clears throat> is given her moment, she stands up, takes her shoes off, and uh, gets to her knees, and literally starts to crawl towards um, the, the, the banner of La Via Campesina that's being held by previous ICC members. Um, the room was silent. I was in tears. People next to me had smiles with tears running down their face, because I think there was a collective realization of the historic moment um, that we were all witnessing with an African woman taking the lead of arguably the world's largest social movement. Um, and, and so when we talk about food sovereignty and, and when we discuss our various processes, you know, we're not discussing it from a place of, of um, ideological happenstance. We're talking about it from our hearts, from our emotions, from our, our experience of reality. Um, and we're talking about ideological processes, but they run hand in hand. It's not one or the other. They're, they're complementary. Um, and, and I want to borrow some language of um, Olivier from yesterday, which was very provocative when he talked about the second generation of, of food sovereignty. I think for us as youth, and youth within La Via Campesina and globally around this movement, that, that we, we are the children of this, of this second generation of, of food sovereignty, um, and that we follow in the foundations of, of Paul and others and leaders that have laid foundations of agroecology um, and the processes of the of our social movement. Um, five minutes isn't, isn't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's uh, so much to talk about. Um, <clears throat> the, for, for me, the, the struggle since the inception of La Via Campesina in, in 1993 has intensified. Um, and particularly for us within, within North America, um, this is especially uh, apparent. Um, for me as a farmer, um, as a black farmer, I, would, I recognize this as a moment we're in a process of, as what Peter had alluded to in his paper, is uh, re-peasantization. Um, we're in a process of decolonizing our minds and the reconstruction of peasant campesino knowledge. Um, and, and we must all engage in this historical, historical moment. For, you know, I, I've been farming for roughly five years now, and I come from a family that, that didn't farm in two or three generations. So I don't have a knowledge base to exist upon, and there's many counterparts within, within my movement, not just in my country, but within other aspects of La Via Campesina that has, has a very, very similar struggle. Um, I'm going to have to slide through notes here. Um, when we engage in the dialogue about food sovereignty, again, uh, I encourage us to do so from our hearts um, and our aspirations of better societies, and not just from a, faith, a 
place of intellectual um, pontification, if you will. Um, you know, in, in La Villa, we have, we have many different slogans and sayings, um, and one that was shared, and we talked about this morning, that I want to bring here, because we, we have delinked food sovereignty from every aspect of the movement of food sovereignty, I felt like, um, in some of these conversations. And I, I want to share a slogan that was shared by um, a woman from the Korean Women's Peasants Association. She said, um, <clears throat> food sovereignty is a slogan without agroecology. And agroecology is a technology without food sovereignty. You, you cannot delink the two. Every moment that we do, we run at a risk and a fault of <coughs> furthering this movement. You know, and, and when we speak, of, speak about food sovereignty, it is no longer the child of La Villa Campesina. It's the child of us all. And we all have to take this collective responsibility to ensure that seven generations down the line, there's a future for folks to stand upon. Thank you.